We will be starting in Canvas, of course, and I'm just going to show you quickly how to create um, a quiz via a module. So if you would open up your Canvas course, you can kind of follow along with me. We're going to open up our Canvas courses and I want to show you if you are going to be using modules to organize your course content, how do you add a quiz to that module? So I've got this chapter seven module here and in the top right hand corner of the module itself, there's a plus button. Make it a little bigger for you. And if I click that plus button, a box will show up and it, it's going to default to add assignment because that was the last thing that I added. But I'll use this drop down menu and I'll go to add quiz. Then I'm going to click new quiz. I think this was chapter seven. And then add item. So and now I've got a quiz here that's within my chapter seven module. So I can start in modules by creating a quiz there, or I can start in quizzes. So I'm gonna go to quizzes now. Again, on my left-hand navigation, I'm gonna go to quizzes. And in the top right-hand corner, I'm gonna choose plus quiz, and this is gonna create a new quiz. Now, as a reminder, we do have classic quizzes and we have new quizzes. And this change was made um, with this box sometime in the middle of February. So with this, I'm gonna choose classic quizzes today, but just know that this is how you would access your new quizzes. So I'll choose classic quizzes and submit. Once that quiz has been created, so it's I'm starting this creation process, we're just gonna work down some of these details. So the first thing I have here is a name. So I'm gonna do date specific. I can name this quiz. The next part I have here would be any quiz instructions for the students. So it might be that this content covers, you know, these units or this information, um, make sure you do X, Y, Z, and so on. So whatever quiz instructions I do want to give to the students can be given here, and they're going to see that before they actually get into the quiz. So I'll just do instructions for now. Going down, um, I do want to talk about this quiz type for a second, because I actually had a teacher call me yesterday about this, and this ended up working out well for her. So she wanted to kind of do a quiz in Canvas and make it something a little bit more fun. And, um, but she wanted everybody to get 100%. And there really weren't right and wrong answers. So instead of a graded quiz, which she would then have to go in and grade, she really wanted a graded survey. So a graded survey is going to give every student 100%, but it's going to collect their responses. So if you are looking at just maybe giving completion points for quizzes or um, you'd like for the students to maybe do a survey, just like a check on their well-being. So how is everything going? Are you managing the content? Is it too much? Is it too little? Do you need something more challenging? You can do a graded survey where it's going to give them those points for taking the, the survey, but it's not actually going to count things right and wrong. We're going to talk about graded quizzes today, though, and that's going to be like our traditional there's right and wrong answers, point values and things like that. Moving down, if I want to sync this with PowerSchool, I want to make sure that that is checked and as well as making sure that I have the correct assignment group. So just be sure that you're checking those things. If your grades are not syncing with PowerSchool, obviously let our team know. In this, I can also shuffle my answers, so I can select that, which I always think is probably a good idea to do that. I would say for most of us, we're probably not limiting the time, but maybe for next fall, it might be something that you look into. If you want to put a time limit on your quiz, you're able to do that here as well. I can allow multiple attempts, and I can choose what score to keep the highest, the latest, or the average, and I can choose exactly how many attempts I would like for them to have. Um, if I keep it this way, it's going to be unlimited attempts and basically until whatever their highest score would be, right? For most of our students, it's probably going to be 100% because they're going to just keep taking it until they get everything right. 
So I can allow multiple hints this way. This is a great way to do mastery style quizzes. So maybe I allow multiple temps and I keep their highest grade. But this next option here, I don't actually let them see their quiz responses or which ones they got right and wrong. Because I want them to go back and say, OK, I got a three out of five. So I need to figure out which problems I did right and wrong or which questions I have correct and, and not correct. And then I'm going to go back and take that quiz. So you do have a few options here with letting them see their responses and allowing multiple attempts. So moving to letting them see their quiz responses. I If I do check this only once after each attempt, once the students take the quiz, it's going to give them their responses. And if they close out of that page, it will not let them go back and see their responses and then let students see the correct answers. So you can understand what those each of those mean. And then finally, in this um, sort of options area here, I have show one question at a time, which is also available. Lock questions after answering means that they can't move forward to the next question and then go back to a question that, they, that you asked previously. Finally, I can add access codes. Honestly, at this point, I don't know that it's going to really do a whole lot because unless you're letting students take quizzes after they've completed something and you're checking that they've completed something and then giving them an access code. But really, I mean, we need to give our students access to this content as easily as possible. And then obviously I can add a due date. I'm going to add a due date of Friday for now. I'm going to open it Thursday and close it Friday. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top because I have not added any questions to this quiz yet, right? So up at the top here, I've got a questions tab. So if I go there, I'm going to show you guys a few different question types and I'll talk to you about what these things mean and then we'll look at how a student actually takes this quiz. So if I add a new question, I have several different question types that I can choose from. So this, these are going to be all the question types. And again, all of these things have instructions linked on our outline. So if you do have any questions for those, please look at our outline because we do have things linked there. I'll add a multiple choice question. And so April 10th is what day of the week? I can obviously... Um, I can do any text editing for my questions, sorry. I can do text editing for my questions. So if I wanna put anything in bold or give it some emphasis, I can do that. I can also add videos to my questions. I can add even YouTube videos. Maybe they, they're gonna watch something and then answer questions. I can add a picture. Maybe they're gonna be analyzing something. So I can add a bunch of information to my questions. And then if I scroll down, for this is happens to be a multiple choice question for multiple choice questions. And this is a benefit of multiple choice questions on the right hand side of the answer. So I know we have the answer box over here on the right hand side of the answer. I have a full editor. So I can click that little pencil and it's going to give me the full editor. So this could include uh, pictures. This could include equations, subscripts, superscript. I can change the formatting of the answer. This is available in multiple choice. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That's available in multiple choice. For me, I don't have to worry about that because I am just doing it's a week. And then if I scroll down, I also have the option to add an additional answer. And I can also change which one is the correct answer. Now, since I chose to shuffle my answers at the beginning, I don't really need to worry about shuffling my answers right now while I'm creating my quiz. The little boxes below each of those answers are for answer feedback. And I feel like that is going to be important if you are looking at doing a true check for understanding for your students. You can give them immediate feedback by by actually filling in those response boxes and maybe referencing something that you talked about earlier in your content. So then I just click update question and now I've got my first question ready. So I'll go to my second question. I'm gonna do a true and false question. Let's see. Last day of school is May 15th. 
So our answer is true. Notice that these already have the answers available for me because it's true and false. Those are the only two answer types. If I wanted it to be false, I would just click this arrow next to false and it would change it then for me. Actually, so I'm going to change my question type I'm gonna, or I'm going to do May 16th and I'm going to make this one false and then I'll click update question. Moving on to my next, I'm going to do fill in multiple blanks and I always like their example. Roses are to add a blank to your quiz. You're going to use brackets. Color one just indicates that when I go to write my answers, there will be a section of answers for color one. So I don't want to put roses are red in there because I want a section of answers. And you'll see what I mean in a second. Violets are, and then I'm going to do color two. So my options now. If I go to my answers, it says show possible answers for. So this is what I mean by that. I want a selection of answers, which was color one, or I want a selection of answers, which was color two. So my possible answers are red, pink, I'll add another answer, and blue. Actually, no, sorry, these are, these are possible correct answers. And then I'm gonna go to color two, roses or violets are blue. So now when the students take this, they're gonna see a drop down menu and it's basically gonna be kind of similar to matching. So speaking of matching, let me show you what a matching question looks like. So in a matching question, I would give some instructions. So match the something along those lines. And then so now I'm going to add my matching left side with my matching right side. So I'm going to do one. two, three, and so on. And so you kind of get the idea with those ones. So I'm gonna click update question. So now I have my four questions available to me. So I've got my four questions available to me. So um, let me go. Let me do save and publish and I'm going to preview this quiz really quickly and then I'm going to go back and show you what question group and find questions will do. So save or save and publish for, for your students. I may have forgotten something. So now that my quiz is saved, I'm going to preview it. And you can see here's my multiple choice question. Collapse that. So I've got my multiple choice question. I've got my true and false question. Ashley, um, you asked a question and I apologize because I, I misspoke. Um, the multiple fill in the blanks is going to look the way the way it does right now. So I said it had a drop down menu. It's not like matching. I I was mistaken. I apologize. But it's going to actually be blanks. So they would actually have to type in red and blue. So I hope that helps. And then finally, I've got my um, multiple choice or or my matching question. I don't know why I added two extras, but. And so the students can then choose to match those questions. For matching questions, I, I just wanna make one suggestion for matching questions. If your matching question is going to be something like vocab, where they would be matching a term with a definition, my suggestion, and let me get back into my matching question, my suggestion, oh, that's why, because I have two extras right there. 
my suggestion is to put your definition on the left hand side and your term on the right hand side. The reason is because it is going to create a drop down menu of the right hand side items. So you can imagine that a drop down menu of definitions is going to be very difficult to read. But if you do a drop down menu, drop down menu of terms, it's going to be much easier for the students to understand. I'll just click update question. So let me talk about question groups. So if I create a question group, what it's going to allow me to do, I currently have four questions and I want each of them to be, we'll say one point each. Right now, this question group has no questions in it. So I'm just going to click and drag my four questions down in there. Why would I use a question group? The question groups are actually going to randomize my questions. So it's going to shuffle my questions for me. A warning though, please make sure that you choose the correct number of questions to pick. If I had said pick five questions, but I only had four questions in there, it's gonna choose one of the four questions to duplicate. So the students are going to see a fifth question, but it's going to be a duplicate of a question that they were already asked. Now we can go the other direction as well. Maybe I've got 20 questions that I wrote and maybe they were like 20 problems from a set, but really I only want the students to do like five of them. I don't really care what five, I just want to make sure that they understand the content. So five questions out of the 20. So I write 20 questions, I put it in a group, and then I tell the tell Canvas, only pick five of these questions. It's going to create a random quiz with five questions for my students, one point each. So that is a really nice option there if you do want to kind of randomize some of your assessments so that students are, are maybe when they're doing multiple attempts, they're actually seeing a different quiz each time they do those multiple attempts because they're getting a random set of questions. Find questions, the last option here is just to find other questions that I've used in other courses. So just as a reminder, you are able to pull from other courses as well. And I'm gonna click save, and then I'm gonna go in as a student and actually take my quiz and see how well I do. So either in my settings, in my course settings, or on my homepage, I am able to go to student view. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go to student view and I did not make the quiz available today, so it's not going to let me take it. So let me change my availability dates and then I'll take this quiz for you guys. I can always just preview the quiz and take it that way as well, but I want to show you student view. So I'll go to my home page this time. So I'm back on my home page. I'm going to now click on student view. And in my student view, I'm going to see that I have an April 10th check for understanding here. You'll see that my instructions that I wrote, my beautiful instructions show up right here. And then I click take quiz. So what day of the week is April 10th? It is a Friday. Notice that question two when we made our quiz was true and false, but now it's our fill in the blank one. I am doing really well in this quiz and I'm super proud of myself because I paid attention during the lecture. <laughs> it is not the last day of school and then I click submit. And it's going to let me know right here, here's your score, and then it will actually give me each of my questions and show me how well I did on those questions. So if I got anything wrong, it will let me know. So that is quizzes, the classic quizzes inside of Canvas.